Hey, what's up guys? Without a doubt, this is the biggest project I've ever had in this shop. Maybe not the most complicated. Definitely the biggest. So I've been saving this project for a special occasion. You can hear the bandsaw just giving her shit in the background there. I finally scrounged up enough material to build a welding table. I can't think of a better opportunity to try out some stick welding with, her, with my new welder. All this material I've been gathering for the past year or so and uh, since the project is so big, I may actually have to do some things that I'm not usually accustomed to on this channel. First of all, I'd really love to thank all you guys for subscribing to my channel. Just hit 2,000 subs and I'm kind of on the fence here about doing a giveaway of some kind. I don't have much, but what I do have is this little one inch micrometer, brand new, never used. Still in its little uh, bag straight out of China. And I also have this Bondus this little Bondus screwdriver set, it's actually a very nice screwdriver set. You know, it's nicer than anything I got, but uh, since it's a whole set, and I don't usually have whole sets of stuff, I'm saving that too. We'll get to all this towards the end of the video. Right now, we've got some serious welding to do. Well, I don't know if we got enough gas for this. Uh, go up. Well, here's open. Definitely got enough acetylene though, of course. O2 is back in action. There, that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> As you guys may have noticed, none of the holes freaking lined up. <laughs> Plus, uh, now that I got the pieces cut, or some of them, I want to make sure that they're not going to be interfering with the holes. Even though the holes are not, you know, they look about four by four, but they're not. They're they're different all around. So just a little bit, but enough to notice on a measuring tape. So I'm going to clean all this crap up. 
uh, gonna take a while. Got super lucky on that oxygen though. Find a bottle on a Sunday is uh, pretty rare, but that's a little more how a cut's supposed to look. I think we were just cutting through old flux and weld and shit, so. Anyways, get right back to you. All right guys, so this is your basic arsenal when you're out in the field. You know, you don't really have a, you're driving a welding truck or something, you don't really have a whole lot of fancy computers to work with. Well, it didn't when I was doing it anyway. So uh, sometimes you just got to do a little bit of layout. Don't be afraid to figure shit out on the floor or on the back of your truck or whatever you got to do. Now I kind of know that these are going to be a little bit too long and I got to trim two inches off them, which is kind of by design, I guess. But uh, now we should have all our holes lined up at least the way they're supposed to be. I had to nip another slit off of here just to keep the spacing about equal. None of them are the same on these plates. But from the highway, it should look pretty good. And you can see I buffed this one off. I'm going to hit this one too with the cup wheel. And then we'll brace them and tack them all together and start making the frame. The layout's really important these days. This hollow square tubing, I think, is running from 25 to 30 bucks a foot right now. And this is the heavy wall 3x3 three three square tubing. Crazy prices, so really hard to find this stuff at the, at the steel that I found it at so shouldn't say steel salvage legitimate salvage <laughs> all right guys first stick ever burnt on this welder got some angle iron underneath here then I got a clamp to the sawhorses on either side there clamps are great and we got a nice uh, no gap right here so I figure I better film the first freaking rods ever burnt on this machine just so if it explodes, I got I can get warranty. What we got here is some 1 8 7018. It's 3.2 millimeter for you uh, folks overseas. ESAB 7018s. So, it's going to go to stick. Stick. Oh, about 125 amps. It's got other dig and stuff. DC. Stick welding. Yeah, we're all there. Yeah, you can do, I don't know what that is. I'm going to keep it real here. <laughs> Got some lights there for felt, I guess, and I don't know what that is. I don't know. At least leave it alone. 125 amps sounds like a good start. I tacked all this together with the MIG because I couldn't get any uh, reach with this short-ass cable on this thing. It was really short. That's uh, pretty much a whole day of fitting and cutting and weld prepping, just for uh, one weld. <laughs>
It's actually a little faster than the than the MIG because it doesn't cut out. Went ahead and did all the, the edges. This is gonna be the bottom, obviously. And try to straighten it out as best I can. It's not gonna be perfect, but it does look pretty good from where I'm sitting. I'm gonna put a few stitch welds on this rail on the outside here, and then I'm gonna flip it over and weld the other side. Well, that is a lot more fun than MIG welding. <laughs> They're all stitched on the inside, fully welded on here. Should have checked out some of the welds, not looking too shabby. The little can of weld is, uh, she went full tilt the whole time, so it was actually quite a bit faster than this one. Even with the flux core make, it was, it was quite a bit faster because you're not stopping every, uh, for 15 minutes every time. Plus you're laying down way more metal, much more better. Well, we got all our pieces cut, got our four legs, we got our short cross beams which are extra heavy duty to hopefully take up any uh, warpage that <laughs> may come across. I don't think we'll come across any, I got it, got it stuck pretty together pretty good. There's the other two long ones and those are just uh, cut offs. I'm sure they'll come in useful for something. Alright, so I've laid these out on the table to accept those uh, Big green and yellow things that you seen earlier. I'm gonna back the camera off here. I'm gonna do some torch, more torch work. That's what it's gonna do. So I got. Uh, let's do one more corner. We get these cleaned up and fit up so we all know what we're uh, where we're all going with this. Oh yeah, let me clean these up off camera. We'll get right back to you. All right, we got her all uh, laid out here. It's pretty much square. The table's looking good on top. A lot easier to work on a flat surface, that's for sure. I originally intended to cut this over here. <laughs> so, so I had to kind of offset these and they're gonna be uh, kind of offset these and they're going to be covering up some holes, but uh, I'll drill them out if I have to. It's not a big deal. We're going to tack and square these up. I got the pies getting cut for the base of the feet. Okay, so these are going to be incredibly annoying to, to get all perfectly square. That's for sure. I'm going ahead and labeled all the legs to see which way they're deviating. And uh, there's a couple that are good. Most of them not so much. Well, we're going to have to really pick and choose where we put our tacks until we can get, uh, get them all square. Settle for a close. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad either. So I was actually doing some talking in the background, but the audio was just completely inaudible. I actually tried to notch these. 
square tubing out as best as I could and square as possible, but even with that, that there's just so many little imperfections that these legs were very hard to square up. I had to tear them apart at least twice just to get it right. And even so, yeah, not quite perfect. In retrospect, I might have gone a different road. Okay, sorry guys, that actually took quite a while. It's actually kind of hard to uh, get those things to line up when your copes are pretty shitty. You know, they're not great. Some pretty good gap in there. I didn't want to spend any more time just grinding all day. It's just, see, some of them are nice, but you know, some of them are pretty gappy. They'll fill up. <sighs> a little rusty on my chip and chisel here. That's yeah, not too bad. I've done worse.
Well, I think we can chuck this thing down. Well, even the Texas TIG welds didn't turn out too bad. There's definitely a Texas TIG weld. A little bit of shit that's hard to get off, but not. I can live with it. Otherwise, you're solid. All right, we got our pucks all cut up here. We're not going to do anything too fancy. We're just going to uh, face them off. We're just going to drill and bore it out and single point and do an internal thread for a 1 inch 8 TPI thread. big drill bits. Pretty close. Boom. I don't like using the bandsaw for these because the blade just follows the thread and it ends up, uh, I just don't think it's very good for the blade. All right, so we got our little uh, feet here, or, or screws. Not planning on doing a whole lot with this, just face them off and we're gonna cut a little flat spot in here and probably drill a hole for a pin just so we can adjust the feet later on.
All right, so I zeroed it off on the front and back faces of the vise, and I just uh, split that on the DRO to mark our center. Then using the edge finder again, I went off the back face of this, and half the distance of that, plus half the distance in between here. And we should be pretty much dead nuts on. We're definitely close enough for this little project. Like I said, nothing too extravagant on this one. And all that was really just to make it able to set up a stop, and then we can do that to all four of them. Next, just welding up the tops here. It's not overly necessary, but I figured why not. Oh, we're going to start a brand new rod, we're going to all the way. Yep. 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 I think I should put one more pass on there if I wanted to. But I don't. A little rusty. Hopefully it looks better on camera. <laughs> well, that one was for you guys. The rest I'm going to do off camera. All right. Well, there's our table. She's all set up and ready to ready to tack down. Not exactly sure how I'm gonna get it down from there. <laughs> So all I'm doing here is putting about a three inch stitch weld every six, six or eight inches or so. Inside and out, all over the place. <laughs> I'll get back to you when I get this table flipped over. Well, thank God for great neighbors. The neighbor came over and helped me kick this thing off the saw horses or, or roll it off the saw horses. I managed to scrounge up my old welding head just so I could put the Use the rest of it's the welding helmet that screwed up my weld or it's not. All right, guys. Well, sorry for that terrible freaking audio. I've gone ahead and I welded around the entire periphery of the this table. Did one pass with one eight seventy eighteen. Turned out okay. A little bit of porosity in there. We're gonna do another pass over top of that with some 532. We'll see if the little buzz box can handle some big boy rods. So I had planned on doing the first fill pass with some uh, 18610. I think it was like the arc length settings on the welder that were kind of interfering with the uh, keeping a stable arc. It just kept on going out on me here. My reasons for choosing 6010, there was just a little bit of slag. I had to grind out a little bit and I just wanted to burn it out with the 6010, which is usually pretty good. And I know in this case it was definitely not my heat. It was set to probably 110 amps at this point and it still just didn't want to go. I ended up having to 
basically push it into the into the groove just to keep it burning. So, but I did end up finishing a, a pass across there. The 532 7018 worked a whole lot better, and I was burning at about 155 amps. All right, guys. Well, I've gone ahead and I've actually welded two more passes over this, so three passes total. It's all cooled off now. It's the next day. Something, something satisfying about that right there. <laughs> well, I was having a hard time getting it to fill up over the top, and I was getting a lot of undercut there, so I had to lay another bead all the way along the top. So. But that's actually a lot more where I wanted it to be. So we won't be doing as nearly as much grinding now. So, this it leaves only one thing. Well, maybe two things. Alright, give me a big bugger. Meet my surface grinder. <laughs> so that should pick out any of the high spots. Well, apart from the well, it should take that off too, I think. But we'll give this all a good... Uh, and keep it nice and flat so well, I'm kind of curious myself as to how this is going to work out all right so if there ever was one of those moments where you gotta got a you know expectations first versus reality it is not as good it's not really what I envisioned I envisioned this to be a lot nicer All right, guys. Cripes, I've been working on this thing for a couple weeks now. <laughs> so I'm actually just, uh, I'm cleaning it up a little bit. I, was, I left, actually was going to leave it like that. But everywhere I saw a little bit of the freaking edge of that flat bar, I'm kind of going over that. Just to, uh, just so I don't have to make such a big round bevel on it. So I'm running around the whole table with a little bit of 7, 332, 7018. Just finding them low spots. This side's pretty much done. And looking not too bad. Once I hit that with a flapper wheel, she's going to look uh, pretty sharp. With that big cone stone, she's, she's a little bit on the rough side. So, Yeah, this is the side that was uh, torch cut really kind of badly. When I was blowing it out on, <laughs> on the weld uh, slag and whatnot. But it'll still be okay. I couldn't, I actually dragged this into the shop once already see the drag marks <laughs> and uh, I couldn't stand looking at it so I dragged it back outside all right guys I'm calling this done for sure well almost done I can't do any more right now because I, I was gonna drill out these holes but my uh, freaking drill is not not good enough I got one done but it's not good enough but I'm gonna hog these out and probably use, run the countersink over them too but I cleaned up these corners considerably I rounded them off really nice with the cone and then just hit it quick with the flapper wheel. And uh, it's looking pretty damn slick. And honestly, this is actually dipped in, so I'm not going to grind it out anymore. I'm just going to leave that. Sometimes leaving well enough alone is the best course. In this case, it is because it's actually, it's got a little bit, and that's just from the weld shrinking. So, like, if you've ever looked at a big deep weld, you'll actually, you'll see the material like that look at it from the side and it'll actually cave in a little bit where the weld is and that's just from the weld shrinking and you can see that pretty much all the evidence right here these are all stitch welds stitch weld around the pipe here and so it shrunk caved up the metal on the other side and, and that's just in one little spot in the middle of the plate yet so you can see how it, it, it alters the steel quite a bit every time you put some weld to it all that heat, like it's several thousand degrees Celsius. So you're gonna get some some weirdness, but this is still going to be a million times better than trying to fab shit right there. <laughs> On that, where that pile of uh, schmoo is right there. All right, I'm gonna try to drag this in the shop here. Be right back. All right guys, well there she is. Looking pretty damn slick in the sunset.
<laughs> already getting piled full of crap. <laughs> but it's looking really good. There's a little bit of a low spot in the middle, but there's that's nothing. Nothing compared to what it was before. That's totally doable. We'll be able to weasel the brake underneath there to save make up some space. Now I'm gonna start cleaning up this area next to the mill here, probably for the bandsaw and material storage, I'm thinking. And possibly get some of this stuff out of the way. Yeah, with every little addition to the shop, it's a dramatic, uh, re you know, dramatic renovation, I guess you could say. <sighs> so, I was actually gonna just, I was actually gonna do this in person, but Apparently I'm a bit cam shy. So the contest, or whatever you want to call it, the giveaway, it's a giveaway. It's not a contest, it's a giveaway. Rules to the game, I guess, or you just, uh, or rules to the giveaway, you gotta be, a, would be nice if you're a subscriber. <laughs> I don't know how I'd honestly be able to tell if you were or not. And just leave a comment, say, I'm in, I guess. Sure, yeah, because not everybody needs a mic or a screwdriver set, so. This, the duration will be like a week from the release of this video whenever I get it out. And then the next video will be uh, stickers and announcement time. So well, that's a pretty big build. That's a big, that's a big job for this little shop. The little can of weld performed very admirably. I'm still not sure what happened with the uh, <laughs> 6010. I think it's a, I think it's a, an arc issue. So you gotta crank up the, the dig or whatever, the arc force or whatever you wanna call it. I think they call it arc length on this one. But I think that was my only problem. I had to, you know, I had to kind of push it in there and help it burn the flux off just to keep it going. So I had, I had the heat way up there. It was at 100 and, 110 amps, but it was still just not, not wanting to go. Anyways, so one week from the release of this video will be the deadline. Just say you're in, and uh, we'll do a draw in a couple weeks. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, like button. Sure helps the channel. And I'll see you next time. Peace out. Thanks for watching. Uh. Yeah.